Hey guys, good morning. It's December 10th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. Excuse my voice, um, the weather has changed in Texas and when the, when the weather does a drastic change, my voice kind of does this for a couple of days. So um, I'm gonna push through and we're gonna show you lots of beautiful quilts. I have a ton of finishes to show you like probably more than I've shown all year. So I'm super excited to show that. But what I'm gonna start with today is I'm going to do a tutorial on adding a quilt label to the back of your quilt. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna actually show you the quilt top it goes on. I'm gonna wait and to do that at the after because I have all this stuff on the table and I don't want to um, get it all mixed up. So the quilt we're talking about is the Sampler Spree quilt. And my quilt top is together. And I, I basically did everything in the book except one column. And then I took the finished size of my quilt and put it in my book. And then I added uh, five inches all the way around, which would be 10 inches total. So. <clears throat> so that's how I figured out what size I need. Now, um, I'm gonna show you the quilt. I'm gonna open it up at the end, but this quilt was made using the stitch fabric from Lori Holt, and this is a B background fabric. I think it's 9940-Pewter. And um, I, it came out to 68 by 82. And so usually what I do is write down my size of my quilt and then draw my pieced backing. But because I am using 108, I didn't have to. So I just wrote my quilt size down and that's it. So I'll show you this in a little bit. I found, um, well, I purchased Lori Holt has, a, I think, three 108s with a stitch collection. And last week we looked at the fabric and decided what binding I was gonna use. So this is the binding I'm going to use. I do like when I pick a binding for the color of the binding to be somewhere in my backing. So it ties not only to the front, but also to the back. So this dark gray is pulled through. So this is my binding and I have starched it and ironed it so that when it goes to the long arm quilter, she doesn't have to worry about doing that. So I do always do that. So I've cut my piece 10 inches wider. Can I see that sheet of paper again? Cause I already forgot. So this is a 108 and it's a really, it's a really big piece. So I cut it 78 by 92. And I'm not gonna open this up yet. What I'm gonna do first is show you how to do a label. And I've shown this a couple times, how you do a label and how you put it on your backing. So I'm gonna move this out of the way just for a second. You can just stay right there. And I have some leftover fabrics. So I have this is just a, like a white Bella that I had. I'm going, these labels, first of all, are from Sweetwater. It is like sweetwaterco.com, I think, and I'm in a label club. And they come with a adhesive to it. It's not a very strong adhesive. But what I'm going to do is put that on the white fabric, and I'm using white so none of the, des if I put it on something like this, the design would come through and it would be darker. So what I'm going to do is just iron this down and then we're going to cut, cut around and just start adding some stuff to make a label. And I usually just grab some leftovers that I have um, already starched and they're just leftovers. So with my iron, I'm just going to put the label down and then I'm, oops, I'm gonna let it sit about 20 seconds. Sometimes if you don't let it sit long enough, it will peel up, but it's not peeling. And so I'm gonna actually iron it from the back also. Just making sure that it's gonna stay down and not pop up. Now 
Now from here, I'm gonna trim And you can either leave it where the dots will show or you can trim where the dots won't show. What I'm going to do is cut half inch around the dots and see how that looks. That's usually what I do. I usually trim down a little bit more, but I'm gonna start with the half inch. It's probably gonna be too much, but we'll see. And when I trim, I do trim after I have adhered the label to the fabric. There have been times where I have accidentally forgot to do that and then it kind of makes it a little bit more challenging to work with because you have a smaller piece. And when I'm trimming, I'm lining up that top row as well as the line. <clears throat> And when I do a piece backing, this is the same step that I use there. So if this was going to be a piece backing, I would add all my fabric and then I would just keep adding to it, to the side. So I can show you one where it's pieced in. I'll try to find, see if we have one that's pieced in. That one's not. Nope. Let me see the star quilt. I think the star quilt will show. Um, but basically, you um, you just treat it, treat this like a quilt fabric, like a half square triangle or anything else in your quilt. So this one is pieced onto the front, and I'm going to show it to you later. But you can see I just put that on a white fabric and pieced it in as if it was part of the block. If you're doing a backing, you just do the same thing. You just piece it somewhere into your backing. But since I'm doing 108, we're gonna overlay this on top. And I'm gonna do, I think it might be cute if I do like a dark first, a dark and then a light, and then maybe another dark. I don't know, we'll see. So let me get a ruler and cut. Now, I'm going to just press this a little bit. Now, what I do here is I just cut some strips because I'm going to trim it down. So, I'll just, I know that they're not going to stay two inches, but I'm just going to cut two inches. I'm going to trim it down in a little bit. And why I do that, I don't know. Um, I could just cut it and it'd be correct. I just sometimes play around with the labels a little bit. So from here, I'm just gonna add to the sides, just like you would a piece of fabric, and I'm using a quarter inch foot and I just have color 2000 on my machine. And I just start before the label. And end after, so I just keep, my, I'm gonna make my stitches a little bit longer. And that actually looks crooked, so I'm gonna redo that. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to iron. Just like I would anything else. Basically, just think of it as building a quilt block. It's just not gonna be, it's usually not square. It usually ends up rectangle, just because your name is horizontal. Some of them are square, but not many. And just trim this up. 
And doing it this way is good because you don't have to worry about making this exactly two by four or one by two or something like that. And then here, I'm just gonna put these to each side. And the label club is through Sweetwater. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just, this is just how I do my labels. I'm not paid by them or anything. So from here, Now, because your label is already thick and you put it on top of uh, another fabric, it um, is gonna be pretty thick. So you're working with thicker fabrics. Um, I think the right hand side of the label was trimmed larger than half. Let's see, maybe a little bit, it's all right. So from here, If I finished it and put it on here, it would look bad because you would have two dark fabrics fighting each other. So what you wanna do is figure out just mentally what you think would look good. Like would that look good? And y'all could maybe vote that one or this one. I feel like this one is way too busy, way, way too busy. So I'm not gonna use that one. Um, I'm gonna use this one. And what I'm gonna do here is kinda of decide what scale of fabric I want. So I'm thinking it would look really good skinnier, like that, with this maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm going to trim, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this an inch away from the seam. Yeah, most of you voted for the second one, so that's great. So I'm just gonna cut this at an inch. And um, any questions you guys have on delivery, I'm gonna go ahead and let everyone, I'm gonna let our admins that are doing the chat today answer all of that. Just because my voice is, um, I don't wanna run out of my voice before the video ends. And when I woke up this morning, I had no voice. So from here, Let's see. I'm gonna cut these two and a half so that I have plenty of room to trim down. I, this is probably way too wide, but it's just a, a start. So do the same thing. Just right here, just add. Kimberly effect instead of the Oprah effect. Oh my gosh, okay, what is the Kimberly effect? I wanna know what that is. What kind of permanent pin do I use for writing my labels? I think a lot of people use Pigma. And we do sell paper that you can print your own, I think, I don't know the exact name of it, but just search printable. Do you know the name of it? We'll try to find the name of it, I don't. But I think printable is in the name. And then I'll add this. EQ printable jet fabric sheets. 
but you have to have a jet printer and a lot of people don't have the jet printers anymore and so that's kind of the issue with it. So I'm just going to iron this, we'll trim it down and then I'm going to show you how you attach it. And the label just says handmade by Kimberly Jolly. They all come a little bit different. Some have the name, some have the year. So from here I'm going to decide how much I want to show. I could have a lot show. I could have a little show. I think what I have show should be a little bit larger than this. So if this is about three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna cut one and a half inch all the way around from the seam and see how that looks first. So that's kind of what I do is I cut where I, I might have to cut more, but I just kind of, decide what I think looks good as I go. So it might go a little bit skinny. Um, and you'll notice I'm not talking as much and I apologize, I just don't want my voice to go um, away. So from here, I'm gonna use the hot Himmer ruler, which is a, it's like a fabric that's very stiff that you can iron on and it just stays forever. So like I could put it here. I usually don't use the lines on the ruler, but you can. That's about the amount. So I think that looks good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iron two opposing sides. And when I do this, I line up the ruler here on the edge so that it's straight, because sometimes it won't come out straight, and I just guess. And I finger press the bottom, so I try not to burn myself here. And you have to let it sit quite a bit. Usually the tips is where I get a little bit off. Lori says, make it finish at one inch. Oh, look, it finishes one inch. Yay, thank you, Lori. It came out the same. Okay, so here, and I'm just guessing. I'm not, you can use these lines on the ruler. I just, it's the back of the quilt. I think it's fine. And if you were sewing this into your backing in terms of fabric, you would just sew fabric to the left and the right and the top and the bottom instead of this, which is where we're going to overlay this on top. So I usually do two opposing sides first and then the last two sides instead of one, two, three, four, because if you go in order, I feel like your corners get messed up. So I would start with two opposing sides. Kimberly Effect, I tend to purchase products you recommend. Platinum Juki Label Club, so much fun. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I love my platinum juki. I'm glad I bought it. I was it was kind of one of those purchases and I thought, oh, this is stupid. I should not do this, but then um then I did. Do you ever use cuddle? Yes, I do. And you're gonna probably see some today that oh actually you're not gonna see any today that have cuddle, but I have two at the long arm quilter that have cuddle. So you will see those and you will see how the label is put on the cuddle. It is not sewn in, it is sewn on top of like this. Pat Sloan mentioned hold on, she made about 600 quilts. Do you know how many you have done? Just curious. I, I don't. I, it's definitely in the 400s, 500s. It could be in the 600s. My husband bought me some custom made labels for my quilts. I tell you I won the husband lotto. That's funny. 
Okay, so that looks a little crooked right here. See how that's a little crooked? So I just kind of undo it. Let's see. This seems off right here. Pull this down a little bit. I think this part is off. That's probably why I should use the lines on the ruler. I just, um, let's see. Okay, so that looks better. And there's these little, you can see this kind of pops through a little bit, but, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So this ruler I'm ironing on is called a hot hemmer. There's also something called a hot, it's a square and it's the same thing, but it's the square. So you can use the hot hemmer. It says, hang on Kimberly, that's crooked. I don't think it's crooked now, let's see. Not now, okay. I think it's pretty good now. Um, the machine I'm sewing on is the Juki 2010Q. Okay, so my finished size is 68 by 82. And my quilt is meant to go vertically. So let's see, I'll visually show you. So this is the size of my quilt, but I made it bigger for the backing. So you gotta imagine there's a five inch gap. And we have to decide where we're gonna put the label. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it like over here, kind of just in the bottom right, maybe over here. So what I'm gonna do is first unroll it. Now, I do want you to notice I have it really nice and ironed. So 108 inch comes off the bolt and has tons of folds. So it is usually pretty wrinkly. So I've ironed this and I believe I starched this too. I can't remember, but I think I did. Okay, so first I need to figure out which side is which. So, this side right here is right here. So this is the 78 inch side. And I'm trying not to make it too messy so that y'all understand what I'm doing. So then I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. This is the longer side. And I'm gonna open it up. on the table so it doesn't fall. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So like we, so this is right here. What you're looking at right here is right here. It's actually right here. So you wanna be 10 inches in just to be able to be on the quilt because you're, lo or actually five inches in. So that would be, I'm just gonna go diagonally right here and put it right here because that's safe. There's enough over here. I'll put a little bit in. I'm gonna put it, where is my, I'm gonna put it right here. And when I show you the quilts that I have finished, you're gonna see they're just kind of on the back. They're not like perfectly in a certain spot. So what I like to do here is I like to use the um, product called Stitch Witchery and I'm 100% sure I'm gonna mess it up on camera, but it is what I use at home. But I'm gonna promise you that when I do it at home, it's a lot better than the way this comes out because I, um, it's very, very hard to do. So I'm going to have someone hold the iron for me so that I don't hurt myself. I'm gonna put the mat under Put this here. 
Hold on. I gotta get everything out of the way. Sorry. Okay, and then we'll put the iron right here. Sorry, it's very, very hard to do this. Okay. So stitch witchery, I actually learned about it from Barb and Mary of me and my sister. And I'm gonna keep it away from the iron. It is very thin and it's double-sided, like kind of like interfacing, but it's much thinner. Now there, they, we sell this in several sizes and you can find this at Joann's and there's like one inch, half inch, quarter inch, that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just using the skinny one cause you don't really need, I'm gonna stitch on top. So you don't really need to um, have a big piece. Now, if you wanted to, you could just put this down and then not stitch it, but I like to stitch it. So the first thing I do is I do these two sides. Well, that might not be what I do, but we'll see. I just cut two pieces. So what I'm gonna do, move this. I'm going to carefully, hope I don't mess this up, try to get your label right on the very edge. You want this to be right under the edge, but none of it coming out, because if any of it comes out, it's gonna get on your iron. And you need to let it sit for quite a bit. Like, if you don't iron it down enough, it'll start coming off. Um, thank you for super chats from Wendy Hansen. So excited I get to live, tune in live today. Good morning from Central Utah. And thank you, Janet Buster. Thank you for all you do for your customers. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Merry Christmas to you too. Okay, I think we'll go, I'll do this side next. And here, I'm just gonna try to get it right on the edge. You just don't wanna get this on your iron because it's gonna go all over the place. It's, I mean, you've all gotten stuff like this on the iron, I'm sure. Okay, and here, this little guy right here, is kinda coming out, so I'm gonna kinda tuck him in in case that glues down, it probably won't. Just let it sit. And if we sold out of the hot hemmers, there's a hot ruler and a hot hemmer. And so I think I'm using the hot ruler and the hot hemmer. If any of them are sold out, we'll buy them and have them in stock early next week. So I've shown them a, a bunch of times. So I kind of, and this, I mean, this is like an unnecessary step. You could just do this by pinning. I just don't want to pin with all, this is such a big weight that I don't want to pin. Now, if I have a smaller fabric, sometimes I'll pin. Just put this under. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to tuck this little piece that's coming out under, pin it into my mat, and do the same thing on this corner so that when I iron, I iron that down hopefully a little bit, or it'll kind of make it go down. Have I ever used Fireside? It's not as heavy as Minky for backing. Yes, I have. And the backing is rectangle. Um, you'll want to just um, check out the beginning of the video for the size. The SKU number on this is WB10940-gray. Okay, now you can remove these. And then when you're done, just be careful to put it back. These, this can get really messy in your drawer, so I usually just put a pin. And I don't think it matters if you use the thick or the thin. Your point of this is to get it just on so that you can stitch over it. So let's see. Yeah, so just a reminder, any questions you guys ask today that are about deliveries i'm gonna let other people answer just because of my voice i don't want to run out do i use the compensating foot for the juki no i don't okay so here we're going to be really careful and i'm going to move the iron okay 
I'm going to just move that off the table. And what I'm going to do is use my open toe foot and right now I'm going to look at the color of thread and I'm going to show you some differences. So what I like to do at this point, I know we have a lot of probably the same colors. This is 2000. This is what's on the machine. I'm going to put the thread on here to see which one looks best before I stitch it down. So let's see. I like the color 2000. I think the white. Which one do you like? Let's see. We got white or we got tan? 2000 or 2024? 2000. Okay, so we're going to go with the one that's already on the machine. And I'm going to use an open toe foot and just try to stitch right on the edge. You don't want to stitch too close to the edge, but you don't want to stitch all the way over here or you're going to it might come up. So you just want to be right on the edge. So I'm going to change my foot. And I am going to just start on this side since I can just pull this from here to here. And when you're doing that, just roll it up and just be careful that you don't have a big poof because if you have a big poof and you put it under your machine, your needle will poke your fabric. Ask me how I know. So you want to just slide it under. Be careful that it doesn't pop up because you don't want to, um, you also want to make sure you're not accidentally stitching on this because I've done that before too. So I'm actually going to hold this thread before I start stitching so it doesn't become ugly and in the stitch. Make two stitches. Well, actually, I'm going to make my stitches pretty big. I'm going to make them two and a half. Back stitch. Because my machine doesn't have a foot that will lock it. I don't know what that's called. but And then here, I'm just going to stitch on the edge. Now, right here, you see that little piece right there? Sorry, my finger's in the way. Right there, it's kind of poking out. I don't want that to be there. So I'm gonna take my, sorry, I'm gonna take my pen and move it in slightly so that it doesn't pop out. So just push it to the back a little bit. Okay, get to the corner and then rotate. Now I've got my foot up, my needle down. That's pretty important because the needle down um, will keep it from moving. Now here, my goal is to keep all of this on the table so the weight, if you put the weight on the floor, it's gonna pull. So you wanna keep the weight on there. Um, okay, and here I'm just going to go ahead and sew around without talking and Jordan's going to play a little bit of music so that I can have a little bit of a breath with my voice, sorry.
given my long arm quilter at least, I mean, way more than five inches. So it'll probably come in about two inches here. But when I put these on, I put these on before I go to the long arm armors. I, I don't put them on after. And um, they're always in different spots. Um, I don't uh, put them in the same spot. And you're gonna see that in a little bit when I show you some finished quilts. So from here, that's it. And the back, I'll show you the back. You just don't see it. I mean, it's just covered. And if you had like a black fabric that you're backing, you would have to be a little bit careful putting this on since the black would show through a lot. Um, on the Minky, I do the same exact technique and you will see that uh, in the new year when my quilts come back from the quilter. And uh, Gloria is asking about my pink gadget, which is right here. And that is to cut threads. So I just, you can put your seam and just go choop, choop, choop. And at home, I have it right here. So here, I have it here, but at home, I have it here. So now what I'm going to do is fold this up and we're gonna take a little, little intermission so that I can fold this up, move everything off the table, and I will be right back. Now I want to show you my sampler spree quilt top. It's not quilted and I'm not going to hold it up just because it is very big. I'm just going to kind of show a little bit, pull it, but when it's quilted, we'll show it in more detail. So kind of it's upside down here, but right side up on the table. So I'll kind of show, you can see there. It's just too wide. And then we're gonna just pull it on the table so that you can just, can we zoom out at all? Let's see if it'll zoom out at all. And then you'll just see a little bit, but you'll get the gist and we'll show it, of course, on the blog, 
lots of photos, all of that. It's just um, a very big quilt. And I used a setting from the Spelling Bee book. No, I didn't. I used Samplish Breeze setting, sorry. And in her book, she um, had a yellow sashing. And instead of the yellow, I used kind of a background. Well, I did use a background. So that, if you have any questions on the sampler spree quilt at all, just let me know and I'll try to answer them. Um, my voice is definitely going, so um, I have to be careful. <laughs> um, we're gonna move to the next section, which is flea market. So this is a new book from Lori Holt. A lot of you have already purchased it. And in 2022, we're gonna be sewing up this quilt as a quilt along. Lori and I are both hosting it. So you need the book and a Fat Quarter bundle plus yardage. Now what we, you, we, you can purchase the kit from Fat Quarter Shop, which is the easiest thing to do. Um, is the book in the kit? We're gonna look, cause I don't, I don't remember that. But if you don't, if you already have the Fat Quarter bundle, which is, this is 37 fat quarters. You could just go ahead and order the background, the blocks, the binding, et cetera, from Fat Quarter Shop, or you can buy the kit. Now, when you buy the kit, you do need to buy the book separately. And as a bonus to this, Lori and I are gonna be doing a couple of things. So um, just to clarify, it is a fat quarter friendly quilt, but you do need the background. Now the background, this right here, it's the same background you just saw on my stitch. It's just, once it's quilted, it gets a little bit lighter just because, you know, like the fabric scrunches up from the quilting. Now this is the sample that we made that is, this is actually this quilt. So we're gonna do some fun stuff to make it a fun quilt along so that it's not, um, it's just fun. And I'm gonna pop up the, the dates that we kind of divided it out from. We start in the middle, move to churn dashes in February, March, and then we move to basket blocks in April, May, and June. Then we move to the next couple of borders. So we're spreading this out from January to December because this is a very big quilt it is 96 by 96. So it is a very big quilt. And you can find that image of the dates we're sewing along with on the Jolly Jabber. And um, so it is a big quilt. It will fit almost a king. Now, if you wanted this to fit a king and be a little bit bigger, what you could do is you could, you could cut this border right here bigger. You could cut the border outside of these flower blocks slightly bigger and cut the outer border slightly bigger and make it bigger that way. I would not recommend making anything on the inside smaller, but if you want to, you would start there and cut those bigger. If you cut this one bigger, it wouldn't work because your blocks wouldn't fit. Um, so what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some tutorials on the basket blocks and those basket blocks use the two and a half inch half square triangle paper by triangles in a roll and two inch triangle paper. So in April, when y'all get to the section with baskets, I'm gonna cover up the cutting. When you get to the section with baskets, in your book it tells you what size triangle paper to use, but we wrote the instructions the traditional method. So if you like to sew traditional method, just follow the pattern. If you wanna use triangle paper, it's right here. Just order, the, the only two sizes you need for the baskets are the 200 and the H200. So two inch finished, two and a half inch finished. And I'm gonna do a tutorial and I'm gonna make a basket. But one thing that I'm gonna do is fun is we're gonna have a free pattern that just puts now I'm not gonna show it to you yet, but it's gonna put together just the 12 basket blocks because I don't want my quilt to be so big. So I am going to 
I put mine in a different setting, but I bought the kit and I'm just gonna use the leftovers for the back or something. So um, another thing that's useful that actually I think Lori developed it for this is she has a cute cut six, 15 inch trim it ruler. And the way that she wrote this is you add this fabric right here, which is this brown fabric. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna pull the basket. Okay. So you can see you use triangle paper is gonna be, be used here, 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 here. But we make this where it floats. So she made this where these are really big. Once you make the block, you put this down and you trim it and your points don't have to touch because it floats, which is a beautiful thing because who wants to match points? So this block floats and to make it easy on the step right here in the book, you do need her cute cuts ruler. So those are the supplies you would need. The kit, the book, definitely need the ruler and then the triangle paper if you like triangle paper i'm sure you already have those sizes you wouldn't have to buy anything because if you love triangle paper you already have it and lori is also going to be doing tutorials on her channel now my tutorial is going to really focus on how i use triangle paper to get a basket block really nice and perfect what Lori's gonna teach you on her channel is piecing tips on her method of sewing, which is she doesn't use triangle paper. She doesn't cut things bigger and trim down. So it'll be cool for you to see that you can get this beautiful quilt using different techniques. You can piece like Lori does, or you can piece like I do. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions and then what I'm gonna do, because I'm getting out of breath, is we're gonna kind of move the quilt around the table so you can see it in depth. And then we're gonna put two table runners on the, on the table for you to see with music. One is called Flea Market Star Runner and one is called Primrose Star, Star Runner. We are also hosting a stitch along for the cross stitch pattern. If you go to Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, subscribe there and you can watch Wednesday's video to see the details on how we're breaking that up January to December also. <clears throat> Do you use triangle paper for the churn dash blocks also? I'm gonna look, cause I don't remember. No. So the way that she pieces this block is like a nine patch with corner squares on it. But if you want to do it differently, I can get a ruler and measure um, what size paper you would need and you would just have to convert your instructions. So you would need one and a half inch finished paper if you want to do it that way. Sorry, we hit the lights. We, meaning not me. Um, H1, it's usually me that hits stuff. So you would need H150 if you do it with triangle paper. Um, Kimberly, I have a question about starching. I starch when piecing, but do you also starch the backing that goes with the quilt you're making? Yes, most of the time I do. How advanced is this quilt? I would say intermediate. The reason I say intermediate is because it gets really big. Every block in the book is beginner to intermediate, but making such a big quilt makes it more intermediate. For my sampler spree quilt, I use the stitch fabric by Lori Holt. And in the flea market quilt, I use the flea market collection. Denise says she wants to thank Jordan for doing a great job. Great job. It's 108 inch doubled over to make it 216 wide. No, it's 108 total, 108 total. And 
I will point out that on some wide fabric, sometimes it's 106, sometimes it's 108, sometimes it's 110. It depends on the manufacturer. My Juki comes unthreaded. What are your suggestions? I would mess with the, um, the top of the machine is a little thing that goes like this and it kind of messes with your tension and you just need your tension to be a little bit tighter. So now I'm going to, we're not gonna take a break, we're just gonna show you beautiful quilts and we're gonna play some music.
just so you know, with the book, the quilt is included, four table runner patterns, and there's a pillow pattern to turn each of the baskets into pillows. So I, I saw someone in the comments asking questions about pillows. So the book does include that. And now what we're gonna show, we're gonna show four quilts that I recently finished. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about them, talk about the designer, talk about the fabric, and then we'll kind of move it around the table with music so that I have a little bit of room to breathe. This one is called Summer, I'm gonna turn it sideways just so you can see it first, but it's called Summer Soiree. This is a free pattern by Pat Sloan. Gina Till quilted it. I changed it to be six inches instead of 12 inches. I used the Kitty Corn fabric by Urban Chicks, and the quilting is a pumpkin. So this is the front. Now you'll notice that in one of my sashing pieces, I sewed in a label. So just like we talked about, I just sewed it in. And this one's actually sewn into the seam instead of pieced on top. So this is the front. I'll hold it up in a second too. And then this is the back. The back is the panel. So it's a two-sided quilt now. So I'll hold it up and show you. So you can find that pattern on I love to make quilts.com except that you're gonna see the 12 inch version. I converted mine to be six inch. I decided this year I have too many quilts that are too big, so I need to make smaller quilts. The next quilt we're, I'm gonna just talk about and they're gonna move it on the table. It's called Sincerely Yours Together. We have a quilt kit. It's designed by Sherry McConnell and Teresa made this for me because I didn't have time, but I loved it and wanted to have it. So we're gonna play some music, and there you go.
Now this quilt is called Swirling Stars. It is a free pattern on Fat Quarter Shop. It is a way for me to use leftover scraps from all the quilts I made in 2021 into one quilt. So this is um, our 2021 free quilt pattern. And it's two different blocks, a smaller and a larger. Of course, when you look at that pattern, you can make them all large and put them together or all small, we just alternated. And this one, you can see that I put the label on the front of the quilt and sewed it into a block. And for the backing, I used one of the Flea Market 108 wides. And we're gonna just move this around the table with music, again, just like we've been doing. So this is my last quilt. I'm actually, it's not the last quilt. It's one of the last quilts I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna actually tease something in a little bit that I made yesterday. But this quilt, I started in January, 2021. I used the pattern called My Favorite Color is Moda. And I joined the Fat Quarter Shop Low Volume Club and it took six months of fabric. And I'm gonna, it's such a big quilt. I'll kind of show you from the front camera and then we'll move it around. This one is gonna be a gift for um, Kevin's sister for Christmas. So I actually need to mail this today. So this is kind of how it looks from the front camera. And the label on this one, this is a 108 white fabric from Marcus Brothers. And I did that same technique where the label is on top and the quilting is on top of it. 
I want to mention that all four of these quilts were quilted by Jean Mattel. Beautiful quilting. And um, thank you for working me into your schedule and doing so many. I think that uh, my sister-in-law is going to love this one. Um, and so we're going to move this one around the table. And then we'll move to other stuff. So thank you for all of your wonderful comments on my quilts. I did also want to mention on that low volume, the very last couple of blocks Teresa did for me and she did assemble it all together. I ended up um, using um, one of our staff to help me finish um, just so that I was able to finish for the year. And if you have any questions on those quilts, just let me know. I do have something to kind of tease. So we are working on a different format on a couple of videos. So when you see this video, it might not be 100% where we want it, but we're working on a different style of video and we're, we're doing some different things. So yesterday I made this quilt and so I'm teasing this to tell you that I used a strawberry and rhubarb jelly roll, strawberry and rhubarb background. This is the binding I used and the backing and What's great about this is I can show you my, because I'm not going to show you the full quilt, I'm going to show you my pieced backing. So this is a label that I just added background to, made some blocks, and it's just sewn in. Just, so it's just basically when you're doing this, just consider it a quilt. Consider the back of your quilt just like you would the front. So that was really fun. And so you can see here how it looks where it's pieced in rather than sewn on top. Um, and now I'm going to go over some super chats and tell everybody thank you. And I'm going to show some photos and some what's new stuff. I'm kind of uh, running out of breath though. So, um, 
Another thing I want to tease is on next Thursday on our YouTube members only, we are going to do a fun charm pack table runner. So I'm teasing this to let you know it's this is a pillow version of what we're going to be doing. So if you are a YouTube member, get a charm pack and starch it. And then come Thursday with your sewing machine all um, threaded and ready to go and just pick a charm pack. We used uh, the Seamstress charm pack by Laundry Basket Quilts, Adita Sitar. And we're gonna do something similar to this, except table runner. So this is an envelope back, beautiful binding. And this one finishes at about 18 inches. So I'll go over everything on Thursday. So if you wanna be a part of that, make sure to join our YouTube membership. If you have questions on how to join, we will answer you in the chat. So this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna make the whole thing from start to end. I'm not gonna quilt it on, on camera though. Um, so I wanna, Piggy wants to give a thank you to Laura Hamilton. Love the new video productions. Thanks for bringing this live stream without interruption by other ads. I learn so much every week. Thank you. I do try to bring you different techniques that you can add to your sewing room or just show you stuff and you're gonna like some of it and not some of it, but I guarantee something I show you will help you in your quilting in some way. Thank you to Chantel from 141 Design Company. Thank you for the inspiration. I'm not much of a quilter, but am committed to quilting more in 2022. Awesome. And then thank you to Bonnie Eisenhower. Thank you for all you do, Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you for watching. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show some photos of my kids and some Make-A-Wish grants. So I'll just pop up a couple photos and talk through them. So this is Christopher on the very right and he is on a select basketball team and they won all three games on Saturday. He did have four games, but that was a different, he's in two different um, leagues, but he was so excited that they won first place because it's the first time he's ever done that. So he's so excited. So that's him on the right. And then the next picture is me with him. He's such a cute little boy. And look how tall he is. He is 11 years old and he is almost as tall as me. He is almost as tall as Emma also. Let's see what the next photo is. Uh, okay, so Emma had drill team tryouts on Friday. And um, she didn't get out until like 1030. And then they were supposed to post the results at 11 but they didn't post until 11.30. So I was sitting in my little recliner and then Piggy is looking at Emma that's sitting at the kitchen table waiting for the results. So I took a picture, he's so cute. And then um, this right here is going to be uh, something that if you're in Austin, I would encourage you to go visit. These are the Maywald Christmas lights. It is a family and a, and a son that raises money for Make-A-Wish annually. His name is Jordan. He's a college student at Texas A&M. And if you go visit the light display, he has um, mailboxes all over the place to um, raise money for Make-A-Wish. And we're just flipping through showing you the different photos. So um, that is Will on the left and Peyton on the right. And that's like their garage that they kind of did a little decoration. It's so awesome. But if you're in Austin, you should definitely go. And they do have a Facebook page that you could follow so that if there are certain events, um, like if they're gonna have a certain thing, they'll post it. And they post lots of pretty pictures. So even if you're, that's me and Kevin, even if you are um, not in Austin, you can follow their Facebook page and they do have a way you can donate th through there also. And that Santa, that was a great story. So Kevin and I asked him, how he got that Santa and he said I believe Michigan there's a Christmas store and so he bought that and um, he was featured on the ABC show it's like an ABC Christmas light show and he won and he used some of the money to buy that Santa and it took I guess you put it together on the like by being inside the Santa so that's pretty interesting and then that's my um that's Kevin 
one of Kevin's sisters, Kevin's parents, our niece, and then my four kids. And so I just encourage you, if you're in Austin, it's such a beautiful thing and it goes to such a great cause. And then, yeah, go back to that last picture. That last picture, the little blonde in the back, that's Emma's best friend. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a picture of Emma from last night. So that's Emma dressed up in that little costume. So if you are going to the Westlake Nutcracker, that is my daughter. She was signing autographs. And um, I don't think she's ever been so happy in her life, but she is playing, I guess, the French lead. I don't know a thing about the Nutcracker, but I get to watch it tonight. They do five shows, and she's actually doing her second show right now. They do a show for the elementary school kids as part of, of the program, and then tonight I get to see her, and then she does it twice on Saturday. And um, her drill team try tryouts went well. She, she made the team, so that's exciting. So the next ones, we're going to just rotate through the photos, and I'm just going to talk as Jordan flips. So we actually got to grant a Make-A-Wish this week. We have been working with Patton and her family since 2020. We um, were signed up to grant her wish, but we had to wait because of travel. And this is gonna be the very first wish from the Make-A-Wish Central South Texas chapter that actually gets on a plane. She's going to Hawaii she loves to sew and quilt. That is her service dog, Raider, who is so good. Oh my gosh, I want a service dog. I, the stuff she was telling me he could do was amazing. I was like, gosh, my dog, all he can do is sleep. But she has an autoimmune disorder and um, she wanted to go to Hawaii. And so she, um, a lot of people change their wish ideas throughout 2020 but she decided she wanted to go to Hawaii so she's gonna go with her parents and her brother that's her best friend on the right her brother's in college so he wasn't able to go to the to the party to um, kick it off but um, she's gonna have a lot of fun and I'm very excited to be able to grant that wish when I left that night I felt like that was my Christmas present to myself that I actually did something good in this world with the help of all of you guys um, I couldn't have done it without all of you guys. So thank you so much to everybody who donates to our charity quilts every year. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little break, put some music on and we'll be back in like 30 seconds. to give you a little peek at the what's new section um, and then I'm excited to see all of you guys next Thursday that are YouTube members and then just as a reminder next Friday will be our last live stream of 2021 so this arrived this week and we're gonna show it to you this is cookbook by Lori Holt we have a one yard bundle that comes in two different colorways 
we have a half yard bundle of the entire collection, a fat quarter bundle of the entire collection, layer cake, jelly roll, and jolly bars. Our charm packs are still on the way to us. And there's some notions. These are the baked with love enamel tins. You can put quilt blocks in them. And these are the kitchen canisters and there's three inside. And that's how I'm gonna end today. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend and thank you for tuning in.